Hello again, Glenn with Wogscapes. Uh, I'm still working on the Death Guard table. Uh, I'm at a point right now, it's taking a really long time, what I'm working on, uh, more of the construction and just getting the base down. It's not really interesting, so I'm not going to do an update on the table. Instead, I'm going to talk about a new material I'm going to be testing out uh, for water. In the past, I've used the Woodland Scenics uh, Realistic Water, and it's pretty good. It's pretty expensive, but there's no mixing, right? Uh, so, to, you know, if you just need a small amount, it's really easy to, to use. You can use regular craft paint if you want to tint it. Just even house paint, anything. You can, you can mix into there. Uh, it takes it very well. Um, no fumes, no odors. But... I've found that even after, even on some of the sample boards I've done here, even two years later, it's pretty hard, but I can still like press my fingernail into that. And I'm worried that if you're putting a model on there and maybe you leave it set up overnight, that it's going to leave a permanent indent, a little ring or a little corner is going to bite into that. Um, and you can't really go as thick with it. The pores, you can only really go an eighth or a quarter of an inch right um so if you want something deeper it doesn't really lend that well so i'm going to start trying resins and this is the one i picked up here epoxycast uh 690 and you can find videos on youtube on how to use this and all the different things you can do with it but it looks like it's hard like hard like steel right so that's what i want so i'm going to experiment with this i don't know how it takes color i know you can buy pigments for this but can I, what, what is that pigment? Can I just, can I just use house paint? Can I just use art paint? I don't know, I'm gonna find out. Uh, so I made a little sample tile here, and I'm gonna seal this, uh, the edges around here, and just pour it in. This is really stupid simple. This is just uh, white foam. I burnt a little groove into it. I uh, threw down some paint and some flock over top of the paint while it was still wet, and some sand, and it didn't even bother to seal it in there. So we'll see what's going to happen. I'll see if some of this flock lifts up. I like doing my experiments rough. Like, if you do your experiments and you do everything perfect, right? You follow the instructions perfectly, then it's probably going to turn out perfect. But I don't want to know that. I want to know how lazy I can be with this. Like, do I have to seal this? Do I have to, uh, uh, you know, treat some of these edges a little better? So I don't know. So we're, we're going to make a mess. Right. Okay, so let's try this out. Let's see how it goes. That's too close. There we go. One more thing here. Uh, so, of course, when you're pouring, you got to make sure that you've got some kind of barrier so it doesn't run out. This is actually important, right? Uh, you can use paper tape for this, masking tape. Uh, I've seen popsicle sticks, uh, saran wrap that's folded up and glued. But even with this barrier here, there's still a chance that this... This stuff takes 24 hours to, to set up, right? Uh, so that's a long time. That's enough time for it to find an edge and drip down, right? So it could pour into here, find a little corner, and start dripping down the edge down here, and then it's going to be all over the table. It'll, it will go everywhere, right? So you need to fix that. Uh, it's not going to go through the tape, right? It's going to find a way to go down. So you need to create a barrier around this edge. And I have found that just hot glue works great. And you're almost like you're caulking this in, right? So let's see if I can angle this better. There we go. And just just the corner where the tape meets the edge of the material here. Hot glue and just get it right in there. Right, and then I've found that once you pour into this, you don't see. That hot glue is going to still be in there. You don't see it at all. It's kind of clear on clear, right? There you go. Okay, let's give this a shot here. Okay, so I've measured out. Here's component A. And 67, 69, 68 grams and you got to do the stuff by weight not by volume right that's what it says 
100 to 30 ratio, that's 22, that's close enough. And now we get the wife's kitchen scale out of the way before we wreck it. And you add, I don't know if you add A to B or B to A. We're going to do it this way. Let's see if we can make you. Maybe I can see a little bit better. Oh, it just barely fits in there. Okay. You're supposed to stir it vigorously, which I can't really do. I didn't leave myself enough room. But I got another cup to pour into. So I'll get this going first. Scrape the sides. Mix this up. Pour it into here. And again, the other thing I want to see is, can I add paint to this? What's it going to do? We're going to find out. All right, I'm going to mix this up, and we'll check back in. Okay, so I've mixed it up. Uh, I put a little bit of paint into a smaller container. There's, there's the full mixture there. Just took a little bit of this, put it in here, put the paint in, and... I don't know. When it first hit, it was kind of like oil and water, right? Didn't really want to mix, and then I really, really mixed it up good, and now it kind of looks like... Where's the camera? There it is. Little dots. I don't know if that's focusing or not. Don't spill it. Uh, so I don't know if that entirely dissolved. I'm going to put a little bit on the table here. I don't know if you'll be able to see exactly what it looks like. It doesn't look bad. It looks pretty cool, even though it's not smooth. There we go. I'm kind of going for like a muddy look anyways for this, right? Like normally I want to add uh, a little bit of brown to get to that kind of a tea color, right? So if it's a little bit spotty like that maybe it's okay i don't know what that paint is going to do if it's going to float to the surface if it's going to stay where it is but uh, i'm going to try it so i'm going to mix some of this mix now into here and right now that's already diluted a little bit let's see how that goes Yeah, see, I'm pretty sure this is not the way you're supposed to do it. That looks really neat, actually. It's just making a ball there. It's not even dispersing. That's really neat. Not really what I want, but haha. <laughs> yeah, if you're ever unsure, if you're supposed to mix chemicals together, just mix them together anyways. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Safety. Wimis. What's Wemis anyways? Don't need that. That looks really good. Okay, we're going to just go with this. I don't want it to be too... Uh, whatever. I want, I want to have a little... I still want to have it clear, right? I still want to see how nice and clear this is going to be. Uh, and also, I've added a couple of glass chunks into here. I just want to see what happens when that gets filled up. See if you can still see those glass chunks or if they turn invisible or what. Um... All right, so let's do this pour here. So I've got plastic down. I think I've sealed around the edges okay, but you know, just in case, have some plastic down. And let's just let's just do this. Here we go. I'm nervous now. It's just a sample. It's just a test. I don't know why I'm nervous. Right. I know you can't see much right now. Let's cut her off there. Scrape it a little bit up the edges. It'll seep back down. And I think that's enough. I might take this leftover and, I don't know, maybe just pour it into another container and see if I can make a little like a crystal or something out of this, see what happens. You sealed in there. You better be sealed. Don't you? I don't see leaks yet. 
think we're good. All right, I'll leave it there. So now, hi. Now we just gotta wait uh, 24 hours for this thing to set up and we'll see if the paint messed it up, if it's gonna harden up properly, uh, if I have any holes in here. Yeah, so I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, I'm back. And you're saying, Glenn, this isn't 24 hours worth of beard growth. That's 48 hours. You waited an extra day. I did. I waited two days. So I came back after a full day and it was still a little bit soft. So I gave it another full 24 hours and it's it's pretty hard now. Um, why did it take a little bit longer? Well, I did such a small amount that maybe the mixture that the the ratio was a bit off um, I added the paint so maybe that slowed it down a little bit but I really like the look of it and if it looks good I don't mind waiting that extra day uh, this is a deeper pour than I normally do for when I was using the other stuff so I'm very happy with that so let's go over this sample here uh, I took off the edges, I cut away, I had a little bit of a leak where I didn't seal it quite as well and on a real piece I'd spend a little more time on the ceiling. And just to see what would happen, I also have some bits of glass that I put in there to see if they would go completely invisible or if you could see around them. And some of the bits are sticking up a little bit. You can just barely see them there. And right, I don't even know if I can get the angle right, there's one right at the tip of my fingertip that's completely buried. You, it looks like an ice cube set in there. So of course it is not pigmented like the other stuff. So maybe that's why you can see it. I don't know why I would do that or why I would use that on an actual piece. Maybe to do actual ice. I think that would be cool to have that like ice sticking up out of the water. Um, the shrinkage was not bad at all. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and completely smooth and completely transparent except of course the pigment that I put in there it looks like glass I really like the look of that so this is going to be something I'm going to continue to work with and experiment with uh, I had a little bit left over in the cup so I took some tin foil and I made a little tin foil mold I thought it'd be cool to pour some in there and then peel the tin foil off and have like a crystal jaggedy edges around it right I could not get that tin foil off of there and it's not encapsulated, a little bit dripped out of the bottom. But this stuff up here is not encapsulated. I cannot get this off. So it's stuck to the tin foil. Good. It's stuck good. All right. Uh, so that's not going to work. Of course, wherever any of it dripped onto the plastic, it came off very easily. And actually picked up some of the texture from the plastic, some of the little waves. And now I'm thinking... Uh, you could lay down plastic over top of whatever, something popsicle sticks or something, pour into that and make waterfall effects. You could take that piece now, pull it off, and stick it onto the side of a piece to have a waterfall. Um, after the one day, it's still pretty flexible. It's, it's pretty hard now. Uh, but if you take a heat gun to this, you can get it soft and moldable again. And you can bend it. Uh, so once again, if you're doing a waterfall effect or something, you could actually bend this and mold this to the, the side of the piece, right? So yeah, that's it. I'm pretty happy with this product. Um, so check back in a week and hopefully I'll have some more work done on the death guard table. I'll have all my elevations built up and all of my bark work done. And I can talk a little bit more about layout. It's hard to talk about layout when it's just a drawing on paper, right? So... That's it. Cheers.